Hello and thank you for joining us. In this tutorial we are going to cover setting up customers, jobs, and standards in the Color Quality 6 software from X-Ray. The Color Quality 6 software is available as part of Interactive Inks and Coding's ACT Ink System. If you have any questions or features that you would like covered in more detail, please do not hesitate to hit that like button and comment down below. You can also contact us directly at www.interactiveinks.com. We're going to begin here by simply logging into the software as always. Alright, so if you watched Intro to Ink Formulation 6, what we did in that series is create a formulation, a Pantone PMS 232 was our reference, and we corrected that formulation. Uh, using a C1S, I believe, from Fasson at a 4.5 BCM volume. So the scenario that we're going to set up here is assuming that we actually created that formulation for a specific customer and for a specific job. We then wanted to go ahead and save that information as if we ran this job for the first time in a real-life environment. So the scenario is this. A customer calls up. In this case, we're going to say John Doe. It's a new customer and he wants us to print a water label for him okay he's requesting a 232 he's never ran this job in the past so he doesn't have a printed sample and he would like us to create a Pantone 232 water label for him on a pressure sensitive C1S fast on stock okay so with that information we're gonna go ahead and create our customer create our job and create our standard the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is check our global settings you can do that by going to Settings, General, or pressing F9. Okay, and in our global settings, we have in our aluminum, Illumination Observer, okay, so D50, 2 degrees. Now, these will be your in-house settings. If you want to do D6510, D6520, or any other Illuminate Observer for your in-house quality control pre procedures, 90% of the time, you're going to want to set it up here in the global settings because it'll default to these settings every time you create a new job. All right. D52 status T, with no filter, very common for flexography. That's pretty much industry standard. The sample is assigned to series with minimum color distance. If you have a number of colors that are in a job and you take a measurement, it will jump to the color that it thinks you're trying to measure against. It is a cool feature. I usually turn it off because it can also screw you up a little bit. I'll leave it on for now just to show you how it works. Aluminants for metamerism. I just want to make sure these are two different. So generally I have what I want to match under and then the A I believe that is a fluorescent light. So two different so you can see the difference. Okay. So that's it. Our global settings are set up and we can go ahead and create our job. To do that we go database customers. Again everything in order First we create our customers, then we create our job, then we put our standards inside of our job jacket. So this customer is going to be, we click new here, John Doe. All right. We can add any additional description about John Doe's company if we would like to. Throw in their address here. Okay, That's pretty much it. Very simple and straightforward. After we create our customer, we can create our job. We just have to make sure that we filter to the customer that we want to work with. If, once they're selected, we can click New here. We're going to create a job inside of John Doe's customer, and we'll call it Water Label. So this is John Doe's Water Label. Okay. Again, any additional descriptions that you want to put in here. For example, this is going to be on C1S. No overprint varnish. And we created this with a 4.5 BCM analogs volume on press 1. Okay, any information that you think would be important. Notice how our default settings from our uh, that we did earlier just pop up right here. If we wanted to change the settings for this specific job only, we could do that. So if John Doe had specific quality control procedures, this is where we would change that. I'm going to leave it as is for now. And there we go. So we created our, our new job. In this window, we're going to go ahead and add our standards. So there is a difference between a reference and a standard. Uh, Color Quality 6 uses uh, references. 
and then we're going to talk about what's called a dependent standard. So when we created a 232, we measured against the color libraries. And the first time we run a job, it's a good idea to have something to reference against. So that's our Pantone 232C reference. Okay. So I might put in here uh, CT for who created this job and just make sure everybody's on the same page. All right. So there's one. That would be our reference. Now we're going to create our dependent standard. And what that means is this standard is very specific to the application that we are creating here. That means, I'm going to go ahead and click new here. I'm going to take our measurement. So this is the 232 that is printed on 232 QC standard. This is C1S 4.5 BCM. All right. This is our dependent standard. This is what we're going to want to QC against moving forward. It's okay to use a reference the first time we run a job because we need something to go against. If we don't have a printed standard, then you generally speaking use the Pantone Digital Library. Okay. But moving forward, the next time we print this job, we're not going to QC against the Pantone book. We're going to QC against what we now set as the standard for this job, assuming all parties agree. Okay. And that's it. We've created our job. Let's go ahead and retrieve our job from the database by going to Job, Open, Job. Okay. John Doe is here. We select Water Label and we pull it out. Okay, so we have our two colors here. We have our reference that we originally QC'd against, and we have our moving forward, our dependent QC standard. Okay, so I'm going to try and shoot against the Pantone 232 reference. I just want to show you this feature here. So I'm going to measure the 4.5 BCM rollout that I have on the C1S. And it's going to jump to the QC standard. Okay. And the reason it does that is because of that setting that we had in the system before. It assumes that I want to QC against the, the closest match. So I'm going to go to Settings General. I'm going to turn this off because right now it's just not going to help me out any. Okay. If I had a number of colors lined up against here in a really big job and I was just wanted to very quickly QC everything, that is a very nice feature. Okay. But I want to shoot against Pantone 232C. All right. So I want to prove to the John Doe company that I used the Pantone 232, Pantone Digital Library as our reference to QC the job for the first time out. And I'm going to go ahead and say CT approved. All right. This was a 4.5 BCM. Okay. So I'm going to apply that. So what I'm doing is I'm putting notes to this sample. So that'll be saved in the database, and if we ever need to pull it out later to show how we ran this job for the first time or what we originally QC'd against, all this data will be saved in the in the computer. Okay, and then moving forward, of course, we're going to use the 232 QC standard that's dependent on the exact application um, that we're doing. Okay, so I'll go ahead and measure that. Dependent standards are very important. As you move forward, you want to make sure that you're doing things comparing apples to apples. You want to compare your QC standards using the pigments that you use to create the product, the substrate that you use to create the product. Um, if you're doing lamination or overprint varnishes, that's very important as well. When you create your dependent standards, you want to make sure it's universal. If you had an overprint varnish on this job, you're going to want to decide when you're going to do your QC. Are you going to do it before you put the overprint varnish on, or are you going to do it after? And when you create your dependent standard, you're going to make sure that you tell everybody in the notes how you created the dependent standard. If I were to measure this against the 232 QC standard with an overprint varnish on the next time, if John Doe decides that, um, you know what, he wants a nice high gloss varnish on it, we would have to recreate our dependent standard because it's now going to be a different reference. Okay? I, um, I hope I covered everything. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Thank you for joining us, and have a good day.